color match, legible text over a full screen image that started off like this in a square. I'm going to show you how to do these in PowerPoint, which covers four main things. How to get an image to fill the slide beautifully, getting text to be legible, and actually color replicating from a prominent color in the picture. Also like this, which brings me to number four, finding the right image using PowerPoint. And also you'll notice all the more features that are happening. I've got another video where I show you this awesome way to transition uh, that I'll link to here. So here I am in PowerPoint and this works with PowerPoint 2013 or more recent or in any older version apart from number three. So let's get going. So make any image full screen. So if you click on an, an object, you can go to the picture format tool and crop. I love this hidden feature crop to aspect ratio of 16, nine. What does that do? That puts the exact aspect ratio that your slide size is, which is a 16, nine aspect ratio around it. If you don't want it to be exactly that, you can drag it around, but make sure that this doesn't happen whereby your crop doesn't fill it directly. So this will not be 169 like this. Uh, if I want this to crop properly, I need to hold down shift as I go because shift will lock the aspect ratio in one of two ways. So I'll do that, click out of it to lock in the crop. Next thing you can do is you can select it and you can make it full screen like that and it will fill your slide exactly. But that comes to the next problem, which is the text is not particularly legible. Let's look at some alternative ideas. So I'm going to go to this slide and over here, I can actually, if I wanted to stretch it like this, do not do that. Do not stretch the side handles. Everyone can see how silly it looks. So avoid doing that. I hate it when I'm in the audience and I see that someone's done that, particularly when I'm presenting a course and I see some of my students have done that. I hate that. Um, if you have the newest PowerPoint with 365, you can go to design ideas on the home tab and it can give you some pretty cool things where it uses cropping and not stretching like this for some full screen images. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like too much. You can always click more ideas if you want to get other insights. Yes, what I could do is identify that this is quite a dark style. So I could go here and make the text white. That's probably the first thing I would do, but it's still not particularly great. There's all this kind of overlapping with actual parts of the picture that I don't want to happen. So I'm actually going to insert an object here and I'm gonna draw a rectangle starting on the top of my slide, going roughly halfway, it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to right click on it and choose to format shape. I'm going to go to the fill color, choose gradient fill, and I'm going to delete all of the gradient stops except the first and the last one. And I'm going to make the gradient direction to be linear like this. I'm going to make these actually the same color. So you'll notice that in this case, I have a darkish background. So I'm going to do this one to be black. So I would click here and make this one to be black and click here and do the same, make this one to be black. Then I would also go to the transparency of the first one and make that to be 100% transparent. So it looks like this. And finally go to the line and we're gonna choose just no line, no outline like that. And then we just need to put this behind the text. So click on it and send backwards or use the shortcut that is send backwards. The other way is bring forwards. So now it's a lot more prominent and a lot easier to see than what we had before. You can adjust this so you can make it bigger or smaller. Or if the text is coming up really, really far, you can always add a gradient stop in the middle and you can even just fine tune that so that it's a little bit easier to understand. Or you can give it a little bit of transparency, like 20% there if you want to go more sophisticated. The same works with white color, white on black. So my trick is once you've got one, just reuse it. Don't bother 
recreating it because it does take a while to recreate. But I will show you how to reuse it across another slide and then how it differs if it's white. So let's say that we want to put the text on this direction. Um, what you would do is you would sort of select the object and copy it. So I got a couple more pictures. So once you have the object, all you need to do is select it and copy it. Then go to another one and paste it. And in this case, I want the prominent part of my picture to be on the right hand side. So I want to cover this one, but I do need to flip it. So click on the object, go to shape format, rotate and flip horizontal like that. Notice that this is now the prominent part of your picture. And if you actually add some text afterwards, you don't even have to send it back. Just make sure you add some text that is white. And I advise to make all text on slides minimum size 30 so that it's legible to everyone in the dark of the room. And look at that difference. Wow. Uh, I chose to put it on this side because you should always look for the less prominent side of the image where less is happening. So in this case, this is where I've got my stuff happening. This right side is where there's less. So this is where I put my text. In this case, it's the other way around. Uh, the white one is pretty simple, so I'll just show you that quickly. You would just sort of draw one, format shape, go to gradient, one like this, and then you would just make all three of them white, or two of them white, uh, depending how it works out for you. Um, give it no line. And then you just fiddle around with the transparency. So this one, for example, let's set the transparency to 100%. Uh, the middle one, let's set it to, for example, 30% like that. And again, you can flip it as you need be. And you can then make text in black quite legible. Move the object back and forth if you want to fine tune it as well. That can also give you flexibility in how it looks. So uh, that's all very nice, but how can we actually grab the text from uh, another color that we want? So let me first make it bigger. Control shift and greater than will actually make the text bigger or smaller as the other way around. I love using that shortcut. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the green from this picture. So I'm going to click on the text and choose the eyedropper. The eyedropper allows you to pick up any color from somewhere else in the screen. So there you go. That is one that we can do. By the way, the eyedropper works everywhere. So if we wanted to, hypothetically, we could do an eyedropper of the box like that. We could do an eyedropper from the outline. It works anywhere where you can change a color in PowerPoint. A little trick from the eyedropper as well. If you want to take a color from somewhere that's out of your slide, then unfortunately, the eyedropper disappears when you leave the slide edit area, even when you go here to another slide. But if you want to get a, pick, a color from somewhere else, all you have to do is click and hold, and then it does actually work, like that. That works in PowerPoint, but also outside of PowerPoint if you have, say, a website with a logo or another image somewhere else you can pick up the color from elsewhere all you have to do is click and hold on the eyedropper and then release when you're done so let's uh get rid of this fill color like that and let's go into slideshow mode here look at that so a color matches the most prominent color in the picture here's another one that i did earlier that i showed you there's you've got the orange and the beetroot color Notice that you should always try and go for a lighter tone when you're doing light on black so that you get a higher contrast. This, I would say, arguably is a little bit too dark for this setting, and I would maybe pick a lighter sort of purple color to make it match better. So if you go to the Insert tab in PowerPoint, brand new in Office 365, pictures, you have stock images. This is amazing. It's thousands of stock images that Microsoft have prepaid for, organized into categories and searchable. So for example, let's look for the yellow ones. So you can get sort of like yellow tinted colors or maybe architecture. 
like that. And what's unique about these sort of stock images is that they do end up having lots of empty space for you to write some wording on your slides. Look at these two, for example. Some of them don't, and I advise against using them like this one. Those don't look very good as full screen images if you have some text to add, but other ones like this one with lots of white space on one of the parts of it allows you to make the most out of that feature. So those are the ones you should go for, I think. So once you choose the ones that you want, uh, keep a note of the dimensions as well. You can see them like this. They are all landscape, but some of them might be more adapted to full your full screen than others. There you go. So you insert them. You can get some world monuments as well as you can see here. And here, look at all the empty space you can use to write on your slide. Of course, you can crop it to an aspect ratio as I showed you earlier. Uh, alternative is you can go to insert pictures and online pictures. And this allows you to use Bing images to find your images directly within PowerPoint. So you can search for, for example, architecture. And then it gives you only Creative common ones, which means ones that you can use. Notice here how you have most of your images are very, very filled and hard to find ones with empty space. Some of them have a bit of empty space like this one. Others don't. You can if you want to search for filters and you can choose, for example, large or extra large images. The stock images, by the way, are really, really beautiful HD images. But what I like here as well is that you can filter it by color and maybe by layout as well. So you want wide ones and you might want to have only ones with tints of green like that and it can filter those for you there. So they can be good, but again, not as good as stock images in terms of finding ones with lots of empty space. This one is okay in the sky, but not quite as prominent as we saw in stock images. Sometimes when you insert an image though, you will get some extra wording that says instructions of how to use this image uh, using the Creative Commons licenses. In this case, I haven't done, but make sure you're aware of the rights that you have to reuse images. Not a problem if you use the stock images because Microsoft has prepaid for them already. And for Google images, let's just search for that click on images and a lot of people have never clicked on this button tools I love this you can go to color and choose transparent for example and then it gives you transparent backgrounds or in this case you can choose a color you can also go to size large to make sure it's very high definition as I showed you earlier you can't change the aspect ratio and look for tall or long ones but you can choose a type or usage rights as well Let's get any color there. So they tend to be just kind of nice big images with busy backgrounds. This one's okay, um, but a lot of them aren't. By the way, if you do have tall images like this that you want to convert to a horizontal one, I have another video that I'll link to that allows you to do just that. So it's a trick that you can do. That's pretty cool. I use it quite often. All right, so that's the end of this video. If you like this content, then please give me the like button. And also I have loads more features. So please feel free to click the subscribe button should you want more information and more videos. Thanks for watching.